Hi everyone. So one of the things I did to heal myself from Lyme disease was to take daily saunas. And I didn't realize it at the time um, that sweating profusely can be incredibly powerful. So I started to do a little research about why this was so. And here's what I found out. The practice of purposely getting hot and sweating has been going on for at least a couple thousand years. It's been done throughout the world in many different cultures. Um, the ancient Greeks, Romans, Turks, Russians, Japanese, Native Americans, everyone had their own version of the sauna. Today in the Western world, we're primarily using a variation of the sauna that has, has its origins in Finland. Taking a sauna was a health practice, but for many ancient cultures, it was spiritual, mystical, and <clears throat> a religious practice as well. The fire was thought to come from heaven and sacred. The stones were an altar. The steam that rises from the stones was a spirit. Saunas were used as a place to nurse the sick back to health, as well as a place to ready the dead for burial. It was used as a delivery room and for spiritual reasons, but as well because it was private, clean, and warm. So what can a sauna do for you on a physical level? Most notably, uh, sweating profusely carries away, of course, dirt, dead skin, and body odor. In an effort to bring down the body's temperature, your heart rate increases to levels which correspond to light work or a moderate fever. Blood circulation and cardiac output both increase, but blood pressure remains the same due to the dilation of the blood vessels from the heat. Sessions in a sauna can tend to increase white blood cells, so, so it can help to fight off colds and flus. Endorphins are also released during a sauna, and that helps inflammatory conditions like arthritis. The skin is an organ of elimination. The lymphatic system utilizes the skin and kidneys to eliminate the body's waste products, including toxins. This could be heavy metals, bacterial, viral, or chemical toxins we come in contact with in our modern world. A recent study was performed on 9-11 first responders. A group of 500 did a sauna detox program. Upon completion, the first responders had significant improvement in symptom severity, number of days of missed work, the number of medications needed, and they also saw improvement in thyroid function, balance, reaction time, and even IQ. There's some other conditions which a sauna is helpful for as well. Chronic fatigue, mild depression, musculoskeletal pain, and skin conditions. There are a few cautions when using a sauna. Don't eat right before or during a sauna. The body needs a lot of blood flow for digestion, and as I mentioned, during high heat, the body has shunted that blood flow to the peripheral blood vessels in an attempt to cool the body. Don't use alcohol in the sauna. It could put you to sleep, and the impact of the alcohol is intensified by the heat. It can also give you a, a false sense of exactly how hot it is in that sauna. It's not advised for pregnant women to use a sauna either. Researchers found an increase in birth defects following, uh, uh, following exposure to intense heat during the first trimester. Ideally, one should do nothing in the sauna but relax. This may be part of that feeling of well-being that's associated with the practice. In our current culture, there are so few times when we feel comfortable doing nothing, just sitting with our thoughts. It can be a good time to socialize or bond with friends and family. The environment is perfect for intimate, quiet conversation. Most gyms have saunas, but you can also purchase or build your own. There are do-it-yourself kits, or you could build from scratch as well. For some practical tips for starting a sauna practice and more information, watch the video by The Revolution, and of course, I'll link it below. So that's it, everyone. Thank you for watching. Now get out there and start sweating, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.